Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your Raptors Weekly Podcast. And of course, with this Raptors Weekly Podcast, before I even continue on, make sure you subscribe, share, like, and we'll just, you know, this week wasn't a great week. This past Raptors Week, quite frankly, has been depressing. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are very depressed when it comes to the Raptors. I'm pretty confident that most of you guys have, you know, decided to give up on the team. Because if you're just looking all over Twitter, it looks like everyone has given up on this team. But I would say don't give up just yet. This team is still a pretty good team. It's just every every team goes through its hard times. Maybe this is just our hard time. If we think of it like this, and I think a lot of people are, are putting the comparisons to this team. The Boston Celtics... We're thinking of firing their coach. They're thinking of trading uh, Jalen Brown. They're going through some turmoil on that team. And what happened? They had like the number one defense. And then I'm going to the finals. And right now, this year, they have the best record in the league. And have clearly been the standouts out of the whole NBA. So sometimes things aren't as bad as it seems. But right now it's bad. Like... Losing two games to the Orlando Magic isn't good. Losing two games to the Orlando Magic, when, quite frankly, when I did the podcast last week, I'm thinking to myself, the, the, the Raptors, this is their easy week. This is a week that's going to go smoothly. No one's going to have to worry about nothing. It's going to go It's going to go great. Like It's all, it's all going to be fine. That didn't happen. The prediction did not come true. And when the prediction doesn't come true, it, it, it almost limits you. You know, to what you're thinking of this team. Now everyone's second guessing this team, questioning Nick Nurse, questioning the the players, saying the lineup is different, this and that. Everyone's questioning everything. And that's what happens. When you start losing games, people tend to not believe in you as much. And it happens. Like, it just, I don't know. It it sucks. Like, as much as I would love to change. You know, Raptor fans' thoughts. I would say the one thing with Raptor fans, we're so finical. We're so, like, small-minded in that sense. We're, like, when things don't go right for one game, we're ready to call it quits. We're ready to trade. Right now, we're ready to trade Fred. Like, Fred is on the trade block. We're ready to trade him. We're ready to stop this whole 6-9 thing. We're ready to stop playing Coloco, which I've been saying. That's fine. We're ready to, like... Everyone's now second guessing. Should we have traded for Kevin Durant? Why did we do? The, why didn't we do the Kevin Durant and Scotty Barnes? Scotty Barnes hasn't been playing well. We should have done this. We should have done that. You know, with that thought process and having these thoughts, you're never gonna be satisfied. You're never gonna be happy. Now, going to the first game against Orlando, Franz did his thing. Franz was like he scored close to forty points. He he was everywhere. He he was. I I don't think people thought he had all this in his game, but he does, and he did. Shooting mid ranges, like beating people off the dribble, uh, hitting the three well, like they were doing everything. You know, Pablo was doing his thing. Bull Bull was. Everyone was kind of contributing to to the magic, and I would say for Toronto, it just seems like. I don't know where their defensive energy is coming from. I don't know where their energy in general is coming from. Pascal had to do everything. And I'm going to get to Pascal. I'm going to talk about Pascal. I'm going to talk about Fred's struggles. I'm going to talk about Scotty as well. Talk about a bunch of things. But in saying all that, you know, that first game was, it was sucky. It it wasn't nice to lose to them. But I always felt like, you know, we lost to them. Sometimes you just lose games. They just beat the, the Clippers. The Magic did. They just beat the Clippers with a healthy Kawhi. So, like, you know, maybe sometimes you just... They're on like a, they're on a feel good streak, you know. When you have those feel good streaks, it makes you want to continue on. So maybe that's what they were on. So that's what I'm thinking. But in the second game, I actually didn't watch the second game. I, I didn't have the opportunity to watch it, which is unfortunate. Because, or not unfortunate. It's actually pretty good that I didn't watch. It. I think I would have been quite unpleased with the performance of everyone. It didn't go great. It did not go well. Um, looking at the the box score, it looks like Pascal was in foul trouble for most of the game. That's what it looked like. Um, quite frankly, I don't know. I'm, I, 
I don't, I don't know what to do with this team right now. Sometimes I even I'm have a loss of words, and I like I'm a person who's majoritively speaking in a, in a good mood. Majoritively speaking, I'm quite positive. Majoritively speaking, I'm I never think of, of you know of the dark side of these things. I, I'll never go there. Even though sometimes I'm like, yeah, tank. I think at one point I think I really wanted to tank for this past year's draft, just in case it didn't go well. I was okay with tanking. Honestly, I definitely was okay with tanking. But those two uh, Orlando losses were were tough to swallow. Tough, 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 tough to swallow. I think, um, you know, the efforts, you know, people are, are, are saying that the efforts were better. It, it's hard to feel that way when you're watching the game. And, 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 and it's hard to feel that way when you really lost to the Orlando Magic, a team that may be going for... For Victor Wembanyama, but I, you know what? I, the team that's going is Detroit. Detroit, they lost Cade. I, you know, while I'm doing this podcast, with the, the report came they lost Cade, so they're really going to be the ones. But all in all, uh, the team has struggled. You know, I, I no more. I'm gonna, you know, by moving past to Orlando, I'm still gonna talk about the team struggle. Where I see the team struggling is, first of all, they're they're not starting well. And their third quarter is is atrocious. The three point they can't shoot a three to save their life, at all. So it, it's been really bad. Um, but I I would like to say with the three point shot, I think it will get better. I also think when you put an auto porter on, uh, it helps the three point shot. I think when you have everyone healthy and you know you have Scotty or Pascal handling the ball with the shooters around them. Like an OG who hasn't shot well this year, like a friend who hasn't shot well, I do think the law of averages will be on their side eventually. Right now, it's not on their side, but it will be. Because then the auto port is a forty percent shooter career. So uh, Fred is like I think thirty eight percent. OG's near forty percent. So when you have those three guys on a- alone, it- it's going to be good. Pascal's shooting the best three point sh- uh, uh, percentage in the team right now. And, you know, and he's shot it pretty well this year. Uh, Scotty, with limited sample size, has also shot it well. His jumper is looking really good. And, and I'm actually very, like, you know, curious to see that jumper in the future. But the team has been struggling with their first and third quarters. The three-point shot, like I had said. And then what I'm seeing a lot from this team is... I think this word is Scotty. Like, it's the energy. Like... It's like they, I I don't know if I want to say this, it's like they don't know what they're doing, but it's like they don't know what they're doing. It and and I'm not I'm not a coach. I'm I'm not. I'm so and I hate personally when I see people talk on, online as if they are a coach and and say this is how. And I even though I sometimes you know when I'm saying I this I think you know my one suggestion is start Ken Birch and I'll get there. But I'm not going to be the person that's like, no, this scheme doesn't work. Why would this scheme work? Why would this scheme work? No, no, no. I, I, I'm not going to do all that. It, it's just not. It's just not my thought process. Uh, I, I don't think that's how it should go. Uh, sorry. Even going back, let me just go back real quick. Since I know I go on a tangent, but let me go back real quick. That Orlando game, the first one. Another reason why I didn't really like it. Uh, that game more sucked to me when I was watching it. That last play. I don't know. That last play was 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 not good. I really think it should have been someone else having the ball in their hands. I think it should should have been somebody else, and I think they know it too. Um, I don't know. Shouldn't have been Fred. And if it was Fred, maybe Fred for like a like a jumper or something different. That that play wasn't great. Yeah, yeah. That 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 play wasn't great. So I I, I do think something else could have been better in that aspect. So I. I wasn't a big fan of that. And saying that, going back to uh, the team, just lack of lack of energy. I think that's Scotty. Um, a lack of, like I said, not knowing what they want to do. Like, what do they want to do? What, 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 where's the, where's their mind at? Uh, what's their honestly? What's their goal? What's what's their goal? That that that's really. What I, what I'm questioning, you know, and we'll talk about you know Pascal's role in it all. Pascal, 
that is he taking too much of a role? Is he scoring too much? Is he shooting? Which I don't think is the case. I I do think like there is a a clear hierarchy, and I think him being number one it makes sense. He's played all NBA. Look at his averages. Man's averaging twenty five nine and seven. Like this is not a fluke. You know this is all NBA. The only guys are averaging this is him and Luca. So there's clearly something going well with that. Now when it comes to the team struggles, you know. I know the one thing we talked about last week, and I think Fred mentioned it, they like the rotation being eight-man. I don't agree for the rotation to be eight-man. I think, you know, you can play, and and it won't be eight guys. Once Otto uh, Porter is back off injury, and once uh, Achua is on, that's a that's what, ten-man, nine to ten-man rotation right there? Because you're putting off the bench, you have Gary, you have... Uh, Boucher, you're going to have uh, Thad, you have, uh, I think, like I said, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. So you have Gary, Boucher, Thad, Otto Porter, and Pressure Chua. That's a good bench. Like, that's a really good bench. So that's why I think everyone kind of pumped the brakes, kind of let everyone get healthy, almost wait until after, I this may be too long for some people, that all-star break really needs to get people thinking, that all-star break it is where we should, you know, judge a team truthfully. I I think everyone is so bundled up in the middle. Like, let's just wait until the All Star break to see. I ultimately just really think let's just wait for everyone to be healthy. When everyone's healthy, then we're gonna know how this team is. You know, when we're not dealing with, and I know we can say that we've had our best players playing, like, but everyone's saying it. Like, uh, Nick Nurse has been saying it from time. That for some reason, uh, OG hasn't been healthy. Fred hasn't been healthy. People are sick. People are are not feeling well. All those things. Like Nick Nurse is saying, like this team is not as healthy as you guys think. You may see them on the court, but they're not healthy. So if they're saying that, then there's something more to it, right? So we don't know everything, and it's fine. Normally, Raptors keep things in house, but that it's clearly a struggle that that has happened. It's clearly something that, you know, Nick Nurse has spoken about with this team. Now, we're hoping that things get better, and we're hoping that the team performs better. But like I said, there's a lack of of energy from this team. There's a lack of, like, I don't know. I feel like if they, I think if the, when the Raptors want to play well and they want to win, and, of course, they probably always want to win, but I, you can just tell, like, this is not Raptors basketball. We know Raptors basketball, and this right here is not Raptors basketball. Chris Boucher, who I wasn't going to talk about too much, but Chris Boucher hasn't played uh, that well. You know, recently. I think he's been one of the best like players all the whole year. But recently he hasn't played well. Right? I'm not sure if it's with the Gary coming off the bench uh, and now taking a lot of the scoring load from him. I don't know what it is. But I do think they can have a really good, you know, Lou Will, Montrezl Har- Harold dynamic, you know, from a few years ago. That's how I kind of see with those two. And once you bring a precious... I just I think the bench could be really good. I honestly see a big future with the uh, uh with the bench. Now in saying all this, let me just say make sure you guys subscribe, like, share before I get to the my next topic, which um is Fred Van Vliet. I get it. He's not six nine. He's like six foot. I get it. He he doesn't finish well at the rim, even though this year, or I think it was last year's a little better. I think this year's he's okay. I get it. Fred hasn't played well shooting the three. His role on the team is is not defined. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with the team is the role definition. But with Fred, it hasn't been a stellar season. It hasn't been the all-star season, right? But people need to remember, last year when Pascal wasn't playing, Fred was the one who became a all star. Why? Because he was putting the team on his back, right? Fred was was doing it all. Fred was doing it. so he's struggling now, right? And, and I think this is where I don't know. I don't know who these Raptor fans are. I honestly don't think they're real fans if they're watching the game. And these are probably the same people who wanted to trade Pascal when I was one of the few people in this world who were like, "Nah, man, we're we're crazy for talking about Pascal like this." He sometimes people just have a bad stretch. It could be a bad year. You don't know what's going on in your life. It could just be bad. 
You know, maybe Fred, I think I, I heard he's about to have a third kid. Maybe when that third kid comes, all of a sudden he starts shooting like it was when he had the second kid. Maybe this is just a thing. He gets motivated every kid he gets. I don't know. But Fred just hasn't played well. But once again, I preach patience. I preach patience. Why not? I think Fred deserves it. I think Pascal deserves it. I think all of our players deserve it. I think any player that's been in the NBA that's gone this far, that now with Fred being an all-star, Fred is probably a top 20 point guard in the league. Like, they deserve patience. They deserve for us to wait. They deserve for us to take a, a step back and go like, you know what? Like, like, it's okay. You're struggling now, but things will get better. You know? So I think we just wait. We pause. Take some time. Eventually, things will get better with a friend. Now, I, I do think he'll shoot the three better. I do think when you have, uh, you know, a Pascal or a Scotty, you know, playing point, and when they're playing point, they're gonna have, you know, Fred play off ball and be who I think, you know, when I see Fred, I I see the Clay Thompson, like I see Clay Thompson running off screens, running around, catching and shooting. That's what I see, you know. I think it's the best version of him. The best version of Fred is that. Also, I think some would say the best version of Fred is when he's attacking, like when he's aggressive. Like, I'm okay with Fred shooting as much as he wants to. I'm Honestly, if you're open, shoot the shot. Like, you're all, like, you're all in the NBA. Shoot the shot. Who cares? If you want the basket, just be confident in shooting it. That's all that matters is confidence. You know? I'm not no professional NBA player, but I know confidence is key. I know confidence is key. Just be confident in what you're doing. Be confident in your shot. Be confident in, in driving to the hole. Be confident. Like, it's that's just what it is, you know? What makes players like LeBron, Kobe, Michael, uh, like Shaq, like all these players, when they had the ball, they just did it, their thing. Wade, like, you just go, you drive, and, and you, <laughs> the basket is the only option, right? So that's with me with Fred. Scotty's energy. I've been saying it all year. I've been saying it all year. That Scotty's energy has been off all year. I don't know what it is. It's been off all year. I don't I don't know if it's his role. I don't know if he thinks he's unable to live up to the hype. Once again, I I don't know what people thought Scotty was going to become if he was going to become like 08 Kobe or like 20 15 Durant, like, or 2015, like, uh, LeBron, like, he's not going to be that guy. He won Rookie of the Year, so our expectations were through the roof, but I just never had that expectation for Scotty. I never did. I just knew that, like, it's going to take time. He's still young. Evan Mobley hasn't had a great season. You know, Josh Giddy hasn't had, the, like, they've all had okay seasons, but no one's had a crazy season. That's how I, all I'm saying to myself is, like, Patience. Practice it. But I do believe Scotty's energy has to pick up. So I'm not that patient with Scotty's energy because I think energy is just, you know, caring about what you're doing. They seem to care more. So to me, it's not really practicing a lot of patience. I think Scotty needs to be better with his energy. I think when Scotty's energized, the, the team is better. I think when Scotty's energized... <laughs> I think Scotty's energizer, he's he's just like a good energizer bunny. Like, he's just a really good energizer bunny. So I think, you know, he's like, a, I don't think he's the energy guy, like a glue guy, but he can really help, right? I think Draymond Green's presence helps the Warriors. And I truly think that Scotty Barnes is like in the mold of a Draymond Green and a Ben Simmons. I think people really want to see Giannis in Scotty's future. You, he, the man is 20. You don't know what his future will turn into. His prime is then for the, like, he's not even in his prime. We won't be for the next six years. Like, Jason Tatum is just hitting the best version of himself. The man's like 20. I think the man just turned 26. Like, let's, we have years on this. Let's just be patient. You know, be patient. Patience is, is key on that one. But the energy you got to bring all day. The energy you got to bring. So I, I, and I, I know everyone is calling Scotty out on his energy, but that's what you have to call him out. He's, it's not even about just being aggressive. It's just about the energy, man. It's like he looks sometimes like he doesn't want to be on the court. Honestly speaking, the matter is he doesn't want to be on the court. Like he doesn't want to be there. So yeah, he has to play better in that sense. For sure. 
Scotty has to be better. His energy needs to be better. No one should be happy with the energy that we see right now with Scotty. It needs to be better. For sure, for sure, for sure. The Raptors need a better version of Scotty. Maybe that's what I'm going to call this podcast for the, my Raptors Weekly Podcast today. Like, Scotty needs to be show more energy. He just has to. It, it's just, I talked about it last pod. I talked about it again. Fred's energy, I mean, Scotty's energy, is, it's honestly trash. It's trash energy. He needs to show better energy. Uh, the next thing is talking about the starting five. Christian Coloco has played adequate for being a rookie who, like, you know, I don't know what, what we really expected, but he's a rookie. So it is what it is. And saying that, I'm going to say it again. I feel like I'm, I'm a broken record. Start Ken Birch. He actually played really uh, well uh, the first game against Orlando. And he's going to play well again. Just start Ken Birch. I don't get why not. I don't get what's the hesitation. Start Ken. Start Ken. He low maintenance. A low maintenance guy. Just start him. I, I, I have never understood that. Start Ken Birch. Because I, I, if you start him, even if he plays like 15 minutes a game, 20 minutes a game. I'm confident those are going to be quality 15, 20 minutes. He's arguably like pound for, like from one of the strongest guys on the team. He can handle a, a center. He's played center. Starting the, the rookie center isn't working. Why is no one not seeing that? Starting the rookie center is not working anymore. It's not about vision 6-9. It's not about shooting the three. I'm telling you, starting the center isn't working. They're spending half their time coaching the man. And I do think Coco is their center of the future, and I'm okay with that. But right now, he's not. He needs 905 rent. This is not a diss to Coloco. I think he's been pretty good. But this is just means that we just need to start a veteran. I'm a, like Keep uh, Gary off the bench. Keep him. Keep him off the bench. It's not that. You've got to just... It's put Kem in the starting lineup. That, that, that's how I see it. Kem should be starting. I, I'm almost like... I tell you, I'm not going to go too long enough, so I'm not. But just start Kem. You don't need to play eight guys, you know? Another thing that I, I mentioned. Don't, you don't need to play eight guys. You can play more. You can play uh, like nine or ten. Give Fred a, a run. People talk about a backup point guard. I still think myself, ultimately, as much as people say that they need one, I don't think they need one. I don't think it's, like, I think it's fine the way they have it. I think Scotty and uh, sometimes OG, even Gary can play play point guard if you really, like, what is the point guard? Like, Thad can play it. Like, we, it's not that the point guard is unneeded. I just think, ultimately, for what this team can be, it it's not the most, it's not a necessity. You can work around it. And I think you still can but I do think that, you know, everyone's saying that Malachi and then Delano haven't played well enough to keep their minutes. I almost disagree with that. I feel like they haven't played enough. I thought they both played pretty uh, okay, to be honest. I feel like I feel like that's where the rotation and, like, I used to think this way with, like, uh, Norman Powell back in the day. Like, when he doesn't get minutes and then you expect him to be, like, good. Like, it doesn't work like that. When we had the, the bench mob, they played minutes. You got to play people minutes. I, I think avoiding playing guys minutes, it doesn't help the team. It hinders the team. So once again, I think it's one of those things that it's not helping the team. So play the guys the minutes. Let them play. If this is a, a, a time, if this is the time of the year you just kind of throw things at the wall and see what works, let's do that. But let's not just like, oh, I like an eight-man rotation. This is what no, no, no. Why? It's not working. We need Delano to play a little bit more. We need everyone to kind of play a little bit more than they're playing now. Let's keep going. Why do we have to... Why are we wasting time? Once again, that could just be me th- saying it. But I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Play play the guys you have to. Once again, start Ken Birch. When Otto and, 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 and Precious play, you have a 10-man rotation right there. And then even... I never mentioned Wancho. Wancho hasn't played... Uh, for a couple games just now. And Wancho has been was actually pretty good. Probably the surprise of the season is how good uh, Wancho has actually been. And him contributing to the team has been a highlight. So once he comes back, you almost have 11 guys. Like, you, you're you not as bad as you think. 
ultimately speaking, the team is not as bad as you think. The last thing I was going to talk about is something that I, you know, saw was Pascal's role um, and like OG's touches and things like that. Here's the thing. Pascal doesn't, he's not looking to score 25 points a game. He's happened to score 25 points a game because they needed him to. And I think when you have those stretches where you can't score a basket or a team plays zone, that's where you want Pascal to handle the ball and do what he, he, you want him to create. He's one of the better creators on the team. He's not the best creator on the team. So you want Pascal to do that. So OG still has his opportunity to score and everything else, right? Uh, so does everyone else. I don't think Pascal stops anyone from becoming uh, their best version of themselves. I really don't think so. I think Pascal only can elevate. Because when we didn't have Pascal, we, we were missing him. So we can't act like now he's here. We're like almost second guessing um, how it all is. Now what the Raptors may need is organization. I may do a separate video on that alone. Just talking about the Raptors organization in the sense of like, Pascal's your number one option. Who is your number two option? I think that's where, you know, sometimes Scotty feels left out. Maybe sometimes Van Vliet's shot it seems kind of off. And OG is kind of up and down in regards to being aggressive or not. Because, you know, Pascal's the number one aggressor. Now, who are the other three aggressors? And I always say, like, the best teams need a, a second guy. I mean, the best teams also need organization. So Pascal's your number one guy. I think this season, OG's your number two guy. Right? And I think the third guy is whoever's having a great game in, you know, in Fred or Scotty. But I think it's one of those years that you ask Scotty, I need you to be our glue guy. I need you to be our everybody guy. I need you to get the rebounds, because he's doing it. Get the rebounds. Get get the assist. You know, when you have a mismatch, attack the mismatch. Maybe this year is Scotty's year to be the fourth option on this team. Right? That's what I see it as. Maybe that's what we do. OG has been playing really well. He's making him the number two. Uh, Fred can miss him. As if Fred has a good game, then Fred goes number two. But I think if we have to put on hierarchy, if they need organization, it goes Pascal, OG, Fred. Scotty. I may change my mind because at the beginning of the year, I was probably thinking that it's going to be Scotty number two and they put OG at number four. But OG's offensive game has improved a lot. So I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe this is the year you do it. And then maybe next year you go, you know, Pascal, Scotty, OG, Fred. And then Gary's doing his thing off the bench with a Boucher and then a Precious. And, you know, we still have like Seven guys, you know, I just, I just named that still want to get touches. So that's something we still have to think about. We have seven guys that we consistently want to get touch, uh, touches. And we, we consistently want them to... Those are our seven best scorers. So as long as those guys are scoring 80 to 90 points a game, those seven guys, then we have everyone else who can fill in the roles or whatever, whatever, and then still play, you know, quality defense. So all in all, like, you know, that's my thought process of what we do going forward. You keep OG as the number two option. OG's the, the guy that, that you pick. Uh, again, OG's the guy that, you know, we believe can, you know, you know attack a mismatch, become shoot the three well at a better percentage that he's shooting now, while Pascal is doing all the other things, while Scotty's doing all the little things, and, and then Fred is being open for three because, like I said, he's... He could be the best version of Clay Thompson that we have. So that's how I see it. That's it. That's it for my Raptors Weekly Talk. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, and I'll talk to you guys next week. It may do another pod probably after the Kings game just to, just, just to probably complain. Uh, also, check out the TikTok as well. All descriptions are in the bio, and I'll talk to you guys again. Peace.